Hey, Dr. Clark here, coming back at you with another preview video. This time we're looking at the inverse Laplace transform. So last time we looked at the Laplace transform, which took functions of t in the time domain and through that integral transform converted them into functions in the variable s, as you can kind of see here some of the standard ones um, that we did last time. Now remember that that transform captured certain properties of the, um, of the function you put in. And remember, it was sort of looking for frequencies in the time domain, but it was frequencies in the sense of e to the t. So remember, um, something like e to the a t, we get one over s minus a, well that has a spike at s equals a, so it's telling you if you look at the Laplace transform version, it's telling you where the frequency is showing up in terms of e to the t. Again, the Fourier transform was the one that looked for frequencies and sine functions. Um, but even this one, you can see the spike occurs um, not in the real domain, but at, for example, at i k in this case, which is telling you that it must have come from a sine or cosine function, right? All right, so what's going to happen in this case is, um, we're going to try to go backwards from s back to t. And now you can't take for granted that this is possible because, for example, if you did differentiation, the derivative of t squared is 2t, but the derivative of t squared plus 7 is also 2t. So you can, all, you, can, you can take two different functions and they could have the same derivative. Well, how do we know that that couldn't happen with Laplace transform, right? How do we know that if we put t to the n in, we'd get this, but if you put t to the n plus 5 in, you wouldn't also get this. Well, it turns out that that doesn't happen that way. It turns out that the Laplace transform is invertible, which means if you take a function, it has a, there's only one Laplace transform, but if you had a function of s over here in transform land, there is only one function of t that could have gotten to that s. So it goes both ways in a one-to-one -one fashion, whereas derivatives, you can see, don't, right? So 2t, if that was your transform, where did it come from? Well, who knows? It could be t squared plus anything. That's, that kind of thing is not going to happen in Laplace. So uh, basically, we can say that there's an inverse Laplace transform. So we use the notation L inverse in this case. Um, and we could say, well, if you had 1 over s, the inverse transform would be 1 because the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, so the inverse transform of 1 over s is 1, okay? And it's going to be this idea of inverse transforms that are going to allow us to start solving differential equations with Laplace transforms. Um, so everything on this slide is really just the same as what was on this slide, um, but backwards, right? So if L of t to the n is n, n factorial over s n plus 1, then the inverse of n factorial over s to the n plus 1 will be t to the n, right? So we're just going backwards from the frequency domain back into the time domain. And so um, these are kind of the standard functions that we'll use, all right? Um, now, the way this is going to happen for us, and we will talk about this more in detail later, is it turns out you can run a derivative through a Laplace transform. And it turns out that the Laplace transform of a derivative is given in terms of the Laplace transform of the original function. And this is going to be the key idea that allows us to use Laplace transforms to solve differential equations. What we're going to do is we're going to run an entire differential equation through the Laplace transform. And then when we look at what, hap what comes out on the right-hand side, that's going to tell us what kind of function must have solved that differential equation. So that's the direction we're going. Again, more t details later. But a couple things that are important um, is the Laplace transform is defined in terms of an integral. So if you integrate the sum of two functions, that's the sum of the two integrals. And similarly, if you take a constant times a function, that's the constant times the integral. So properties of integrals, the linearity properties of integrals will tell you that the Laplace transform of a sum is the sum of the Laplace transforms. And the Laplace transform of a constant times a function is a constant times the Laplace transform of that function. So those are some ideas that are going to show up. Again, more details later. All right, so um, the big idea for today is if you have a function of t, when you take the Laplace transform, that output is unique. 
So if you knew what the output was, you could inverse Laplace it back and figure out what the input is. That's the key idea. And we're going to use that idea together with that derivative formula, how do derivatives work through the Laplace transform, in order to actually solve differential equations. So it should be pretty interesting, and we'll see you there.